Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite preacher, Gardner, the Linux gamer. This video is brought to you by my 126 amazing patrons over on Patreon, without whom I would not be able to do this show. I want to give a special shout out to Nima. Nima, my dude, your support is truly appreciated. If you find yourself enjoying this video, if you find it informative, thought-provoking, interesting, hit that like button. It really helps the show out. You can also hit that subscribe button and uh, it'll keep you up to date in all likelihood with uh, the videos that I release here on the channel. I do one every Monday and every Friday. You can also head over to LBRY, lbry.tv slash at the Linux gamer. It's pretty awesome. So Electronic Arts is banning people playing Battlefield 5 who are playing on Linux. Um, and this isn't just a, a, a trivial like 24 hour ban or anything like that. They are being banned for cheating because uh, they're playing on Linux. Now, Linux does give you a competitive edge, mostly because Linux is just way cooler than Windows, uh, and that just gives you swag points on the battlefield. But uh, no, honestly, uh, the reports are coming in that, uh, that Battlefield 5 players are being just categorically banned if they're playing on Linux through Wine. Now, there are some people who have said that this is uh, because of the anti-cheat software. And uh, I kind of wanted to go into this and do kind of a deep dive because I haven't seen someone like actually explain why anti-cheat software would, would flag someone as cheating if they're not cheating and just playing on Wine. Let's talk about it. Let's start by talking about operating systems. I mean, computers are complicated. They're a mess of hardware, firmware, drivers, and software, and somehow it all just kind of magically works together. Whether you're running Windows or Linux, I mean, it really doesn't matter that much. Uh, your CPU speaks the same language regardless of what operating system it's running. I mean, in many ways, the CPU in your desktop or your laptop, if you're running Linux, can understand the EXE files. But here's the deal. Every PC is different. I mean, every combination of uh, hardware, uh, every CPU, GPU, and sound card combination, all of that would mean that uh, developers would have to target each of those specifically. And uh, developers don't want to do that. That's where operating systems come in. See, if it's Linux, if it's Mac OS, if it's Windows, they all kind of work in the same way. They create a software layer that lets uh, Software developers target that layer rather than targeting the uh, the like insurmountable number of uh, variations of hardware configurations, um, and it's understandable why we want that uh, in in our software development. We want to be able to just target one um, software stack and have it work. Uh, regardless of what the hardware underneath is. Instead of having to write a graphics pipeline in uh, machine code for literally every vendor's GPU out there, um, a developer can just target uh, Vulkan and write it once and have it work no problem. Or if they're dumbasses, they can use DirectX. <laughs> so here's the thing. Operating systems actually provide this low level library support, uh, stuff like Vulkan or DirectX or any number of things. and uh, these assist developers so that they don't have to reinvent the wheel with every application they write and for every piece of hardware they want to support. But this is where things being written for Windows comes into play. While in all likelihood your CPU can understand what the app is trying to do, the libraries that the app depends on just aren't on your system if it's a Windows app and you're running Linux. Now this is a gross oversimplification, so before you keyboard warriors out there try to go down in the comments and tell me I'm wrong, which please do that, it really helps the video. Uh, I understand that this is an oversimplification, but I think it paints the picture pretty well. So this is where Wine comes in. Wine is super awesome. Linux is awesome because we have Wine. Now what Wine does is it actually provides open source uh, implementations of the Windows only libraries that applications written for Windows depend on. So when a Windows application opens up in Wine and Wine sees that the app wants DirectX 9.dll, for example, Wine goes, oh, you want DX 9.dll? Here you go. And it's not the actual DX 9 DLL. It's an open source version of it. Okay, so I hope you're still with me. I hope that I'm actually adequately explaining this at kind of a high level so that even like new people to this, these ideas can understand this. So you might have heard someone say, wine is not an emulator. And that's actually 100% accurate. 
Emulators simulate the hardware of the system that they're trying to emulate. For example, the Super Nintendo. So what an emulator does when you load up a Super Nintendo ROM, for example, is it turns the incompatible machine code of the Super Nintendo's CPU and it converts that into uh, code that's accessible and usable by your machine. With Wine, you're not actually doing that. Your CPU already speaks CPU, right? So you don't have to take uh, and, and convert uh, x86 system calls into x86 system calls. You, your CPU already does that. What Wine does is it supplies open source Linux compatible uh, libraries to the application that you're trying to run. But that's where we run into our first problem. Windows libraries are proprietary. So Microsoft owns the copyright on these things. The Wine project can't just copy and paste uh, the code into their own project and then release it. That would not work, first of all, but it also would be illegal. The Wine project had to start from scratch and they started out by building uh, their own compatibility layer, doing a lot of tests and eventually ending up where we're at now. They have their own alternative libraries that work with Linux, and they can supply to the application what they expect to receive from these external libraries. But it's not perfect, and that's why you end up with glitches. You might be asking yourself, what do these libraries actually even do? Let's say that you have some complicated math that you need to do repeatedly throughout your program, right? Uh, you can simplify that by, by creating a program within a program, what we call a function. Now, this function accepts an input, does its little thing to the input, and then returns whatever the modified value is. And you can think of a library as a collection of functions. So they're small little programs that allow you to not have to reinvent the wheel every time. All those DLL files that you find uh, alongside the applications that you want to run, those are all libraries. A lot of them are provided by the operating system, but sometimes they can be brought in by third parties. And like I said, the, all the DLLs that come from Microsoft that are included in Windows, the code is closed source. Uh, it's all secret. Nobody outside of Microsoft knows exactly how these libraries actually function. So let's say that you wanna draw just a triangle to the screen, right? You can use a function in one of these libraries like draw triangle, for example, and doing that will result in a triangle magically appearing on your screen. So now let's say you're trying to run that same app that draws a triangle to the screen in Wine. Um, Wine sees that you're trying to use draw triangle, and so it takes the input from the app and draws the triangle on the screen as well. But maybe, it didn't draw it exactly the way the Windows library would. Maybe it's slightly larger. Maybe it's scaled or skewed a little bit differently. So let's say you're playing an online multiplayer game and every time you wanna move your character around the world, the movement algorithm in the game uses some proprietary code from a library that comes from Windows in order to do some like physics calculations, let's say. Let's say that every time you wanna move your character forward, the Windows library returns the value 1.2 units every frame. So you move your character 1.2 units every time uh, a frame ticks forward in the gameplay. Now let's say that you're trying to play the game in Wine and the Wine version returns the value 1.2000001218. All right, let's say that that is the result of the Wine library. Now let's say that the game runs anti-cheat software. Uh, it sees that your movement speed is not exactly what it expects it to be, and so it bans you outright. Now, I'm not an expert on this, and I understand that this is an oversimplification, uh, but you get where you start to run into issues, right? Online multiplayer games are super complex with tons of computed values that are going through the processor at, like simultaneously. Anti-cheat software is a little more sophisticated than that, but Honestly, that's the kind of thing that anti-cheat software looks for. And when open source libraries in Wine don't output the exact same output that you would be getting from uh, Windows libraries, well, that's when you're gonna run into issues. The question is, what can actually be done about this? The way I see it, there are three options. Don't play games with anti-cheat enabled. There are some games like uh, Halo the Master Chief Collection that allows you to turn off anti-cheat before you even launch the game. Uh, games like that really do us a solid. Originally, Master Chief Collection allowed you to start the game without anti-cheat enabled because uh, they want you to be able to use mods, um, but it also helps us. <laughs>
You can also play multiplayer games with a native Linux client, and they can't ban you because the native Linux client is officially supported. And finally, if you're a Linux user, just stop playing these horrible games. I mean, seriously, if you're playing these games and you're running it through Wine, there is always a chance that you could be banned. And if you're banned by an evil corporation like EA, you have literally no recourse. You can pay 60 bucks and just be banned outright, uh, and you have nothing that you can do about it. So don't give them your money if you're a Linux user. They don't deserve it. And besides, I mean, come on, multiplayer games just aren't fun. All right, I think that's gonna do it for this video. I, I wanna know what you guys think. Uh, do you think that um, EA should not be allowed to ban people for playing in Wine? Uh, do you think that Wine should be an officially supported option in multiplayer games? Or do you think multiplayer games just shouldn't be played because they're dumb and not fun? Let me know in the comments and I'll, I, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Uh, if you believe in the work that I do, you can support this show with a monthly contribution over on Patreon. You can also pick up a t-shirt. There's a link down below, uh, but no matter what you do, whether you hit that like button or share this video with your friends, don't forget to subscribe to see more from me, the Linux Gamer. And as always, thanks for watching.